What if there was a guaranteed way to improve on your instrument, songwriting, or whatever your creative pursuit might be? Just one simple thing that you could do that would ensure that you become a better guitarist. Well, my friends, in this video, I'm gonna share with you the one simple formula, hack, if you will, that will guarantee your improvement at said pursuit. And that one simple tip, that is, to practice. There you have it. If you got something out of this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. What? Okay, I do have more than that. On the one hand, it really is that simple. Just practice repeatedly and you will get better. But on the other hand, simply practice can be far too broad a term, uninspiring, and can sometimes feel either a little overwhelming if we feel we have a long way to go before we reach our ideals, or a little unnecessary if we are already adequate guitar players and the gains may feel too minimal. So we know the key to improvement is to practice, but what can we do to improve our practicing habits. Well, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna focus on improving our guitar playing, but the principles can be applied to anything. And to aid us in our quest for building better practice, I'm gonna borrow some of the principles from James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. So in the book, James sets out to explain that tiny changes can equal remarkable results. You see, we're often encouraged to think big, set goals that stretch and challenge us, and to not limit our self-belief. While this is no bad thing, our goals can often be unrealistic and too challenging, leading to little change or improvement. Atomic habits are tiny tweaks and improvements to our daily lives that can be repeated, compounding into remarkable results. James's first principle is the 1% rule. In 2003, British Cycling hired Dave Brailsford as its new performance director. At the time, British professional cycling had endured nearly 100 years of mediocrity. Brailsford implemented a strategy that he referred to as the aggregation of marginal gains, searching for tiny margins of improvement in everything you do. In the coming years, the British cycling team had managed to win 60% of the gold medals available in the 2008 Beijing Olympic cycling events. Bradley Wiggins became the first Brit to win the Tour de France. Chris Froome goes on to win the Tour de France in 2013, 2015, 2016 and 2017 and so on and so forth. This is about the power of tiny gains, small improvements accumulated over time compound into much larger results. So the same technique can be used in our guitar practice. Rather than aiming for huge improvements, just aim to improve by 1%. 1% faster, 1% smoother, 1% more music theory knowledge. But do it every day and those 1% improvements will compound into some solid shredability. Principle number two is to focus on systems rather than goals. The problem with goals is that every Olympian wants the gold. Simply having a goal in place doesn't necessarily increase our chances of achieving the goal. Now, you may be able to achieve some goals using willpower and determination alone. For instance, in a moment of inspiration and self-motivation, Motivation. I may tidy up my messy shed, but unless I change the system that led to the cluttered workplace, the result will only be temporary. The same can be said about reaching a level of guitar playing prowess. The goal alone won't get us there. We need a system that ensures our success providing we follow it. This could be as simple as scheduling specific practice time or enrolling on a course that maps out exactly what we should be practicing to improve. Principle number three, habit formation. In this third principle, James explains that our behavior is driven by the desire to solve a problem. When presented with a problem, our brain quickly cycles through four stages. These are cue, craving, response, reward. So cue, you wake up. Craving, you want to feel alert. Response, you drink a cup of coffee. Reward, you satisfy your craving to feel alert. Eventually we end up skipping the craving and response stage when a habit is formed. You wake up, you drink coffee. Now we can use habit formation to our advantage when trying to implement a new routine, like practicing the guitar. With the cue stage, we should make it obvious. A simple reminder that goes off at 5 p.m. straight after we log off from work or whenever suits. For craving, we should make it attractive. 
perhaps a beer when we sit down to practice. Although to keep a healthy gut, perhaps stock up on a few non-alcoholic beers and drink responsibly folks. For the response stage, we need to make it easy i.e. reduce friction. This means having your guitar within easy reach, not in its case in the cupboard under the stairs. And for reward, we should make it satisfying. As if a beer wasn't enough, finishing guitar practice might allow you to binge watch Stranger Things. You can't put on Netflix until you've sorted guitar practice first. Eventually, finishing work will trigger the habit of practicing your guitar, which is associated with beer and later relaxing in front of the TV, catching up on box sets. The last principle we'll look at is identity change. And this has nothing to do with fake passports and a new life north of the border, but more to do with the way we think about ourselves. You see, there are three layers of behavior change. Outcomes, process, and identity. Now, most people work from the outside in. Outcome, I want to have bigger biceps. Process. I'll work out at the gym. Identity, then I'll be a healthy person. Whereas the ideal direction of travel is from the inside out. Identity, I am a healthy person. Process, the kind of person who works out at the gym. Outcome, I have bigger biceps. You see, if you think like the person you want to be, you'll start to act like that person. In fact, actually owning that person as really you. So let's reframe our reluctant guitar enthusiast. Identity. I am an accomplished guitar player. Process. The kind of person who practices their craft. Outcome. I can shred. So a quick recap. One, consistent 1% 1 improvements go a long way. Two, focus on systems, not goals. Three, foster an environment that helps us to build good habits. And four, think like someone who practices so that they can become masters of their craft. And with that, I'll leave you to go and create a practicing schedule that will have you improving on your instrument in no time. If you have a particular practicing ritual or something that works for you, feel free to drop it in the comments below. Please give the like button a gentle tap. Subscribe for more videos on songwriting, guitar and creativity if that's something that you're into. And I will see you in the next video.